Hi students, in today's class we shall solve a numerical problem on the single line to ground fault. A 30 MVA 11 KV generator has positive sequence and the negative sequence impedance equals J0.2 per unit. The zero sequence impedance is J0.05 per unit. A single line to ground fault occurs. We need to find out the fault current and the line to line voltages. During the occurrence of the fault, it is assumed that the generator neutral is solidly grounded. And this generator is operating at the no load condition and at the rated voltage. Let me write the parameters here. The positive sequence impedance equals the negative sequence impedance equals J 0.2 per unit. And the zero sequence impedance equals J 0.05 per unit. This 30 MVA can be taken as base MVA. So MVA base equals 30 MVA. And base kilovolt equals 11 kV. Now we can find out the base current. IB is equal to MVA base into 10 raised to 3 divided by root 3 into KV base. So this is the formula we are using. S is equal to root 3 VL IL. This is the apparent power root 3 into the line voltage into the line current. So this current equals apparent power divided by, this is the apparent power divided by root 3 into the line voltage. This numerator is in mega and the denominator is in kilo. That's why this is multiplied by 10 raised to 3. So this is equal to 30 into 10 raised to 3 divided by root 3 into 11. And this is equal to 1574.6 amperes. This is our base current. Let me write the current here. IB equals 1574.6 amperes. Now let me explain the approach we are using to solve the single line to ground fault. For solving all the type of asymmetrical faults, first we need to draw the sequence network. This is the first step. Then we have to find out the sequence currents and sequence voltages from the network. From the sequence network, we will find out the sequence current and the sequence voltages. Next, we have to find out the phase current and phase voltages using the transformation equation, using matrix equation. So, this is the approach we are using to solve asymmetrical faults. First, we draw the sequence network for that particular type of fault. Then we find out the sequence current and the sequence voltage from the sequence network. The next step is to find out the phase current and the phase voltages using our matrix equation. Let me draw the sequence network for single line to ground fault. We have the three sequence networks 
This is our positive sequence network. This is the positive sequence impedance. This is the positive sequence voltage. In the positive sequence network of an alternator, we have a voltage source in series with impedance. This is the positive sequence current. Or the voltage is VA1 equals the source voltage minus drop EA minus IA Z1. This is our negative sequence network. We have only the negative sequence impedance. There is no voltage source in the negative sequence network of an alternator. This is IA2. For the voltage is VA2 equals. There is no source voltage. So 0 minus IA2 Z2. Then we have zero sequence network. This is Z0, the zero sequence impedance of alternator. This is three times the neutral grounding impedance. Three Z. Now in the case of single line to ground fault, all the three networks should be connected in series. This is the fault impedance 3 ZF. This is the sequence network for an SLG fault or single line to ground fault. But in our case, the neutral is solidly grounded. So, is it then equals 0? And there is no fault impedance given in the question. So, is it F is also equal to 0? So, there is no neutral grounding impedance. And this fault impedance is also equal to 0. So this is the sequence network in our case. And these three currents are equal. This is IA0. So VA0 equals minus IA0 into Z0. This is our zero sequence voltage. This is the negative sequence voltage. This is the positive sequence voltage. Now the three sequence currents are equal. Let us find out the sequence currents next. We have drawn the sequence network. Next step is to find out the sequence current. IA0 equals IA1 equals IA2 equals. The sequence current equals total voltage divided by total impedance of this network. It is EA divided by Z1 plus Z2 plus Z0. This is equal to this phase voltage is assumed to be 1 angle 0 or 1 plus J0. So this is a phase voltage. This is assumed as 1 angle 0. As This phase voltage is assumed as one angle zero. Whenever you have to convert the per unit values back into the actual voltage, whenever per unit voltage is to be converted into the actual voltage we need to multiply the per unit voltage multiply the per unit voltage by the base phase voltage here it is 11 by root 3 so you know this voltage is line voltage. This is the base line voltage. But in our case, this phase voltage is assumed as one angle zero. So whenever 
you have to convert the per unit voltage into actual voltage the per unit voltage should be multiplied by the base phase voltage this is not the line voltage because this is phase voltage so in order to get the actual voltage the per unit quantity should be multiplied by base phase voltage which is equal to 11 by root 3 divided by z1 equals j0.2 plus j0.2 plus j0.05 zero sequence impedances j0.05 and this is equal to minus j 2.22 per unit so now we got the sequence currents our next step is to find out the phase current this is the equation we are using IA, IB, IC. This is our matrix equation to convert the sequence current into phase current. 1, 1, 1, 1, alpha square alpha, 1, alpha, alpha square into the sequence current. That is IA0, IA1, IA2. So this is equal to 1, 1, 1. So here we can write this IA equals the phase current IA equals 1 into IA0 plus 1 into IA1 plus 1 into IA2. In our case, all the three sequence currents are equal. So we can write this as 3 into IA0, IA0 plus IA0 plus IA0. So IA equals 3 times IA0. If we find out the base, the phase currents IB and IC, this will be equal to 0. IB will be equal to 0 and IC will also be equal to 0. Because the fault exists only in the phase line. So the phase current IA equals 3 times IA0. This is equal to 3 into minus J2.22, which is equal to minus J6.66 per unit. Which is equal to minus J6.66 into our base current is 1574, which is equal to 10496.3 angle minus 90 amperes. This is our fault current, the A phase fault current. Now let's find out the sequence voltages. Let's find out VA1, VA2 and VA0. VA1 equals EA minus IA into Z1. So it is 1 angle 0 minus our IA equals this is IA1. Our IA1 equals minus J 2.22 into Z1 equals J0.2 and this is equal to 0 0.555 per unit and VA2 equals minus IA2 Z2 this is equal to minus this is our IA2 minus J 2.22 into Z2 equals J0.2. So this is equal to this is 
minus 0.444 per unit. Now let's find out VA0. VA0 equals minus IA0 into Z0. It is minus IA0 equals minus J2.22 into Z0 equals J0.05. And this is equal to minus 0 0.111 per unit. Now we got the sequence voltages. Now let us find out the phase voltages. This is the expression we are using. VA, VB, VC equals the transformation matrix 1 alpha square alpha 1 alpha alpha square into VA0, VA1, VA2. Now this is equal to one 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 alpha square is one angle two forty alpha is one angle one twenty this one angle one twenty alpha square is one angle two forty VA0 equals minus 0 0.111 minus 0 0.111 VA1 equals 0 0.555 and VA2 equals minus 0.444 And here VA equals, let us find out the phase voltage VA now. VA equals 1 into minus 0 0.111 plus 1 into 0.555 plus 1 into minus 0 0.444. Uh, this will be equal to 0. Even otherwise we know the short circuit exists in the phase to phase. So the phase voltage will become 0 and VB equals 1 into minus 0 0.111 so it is 1 into minus 0 0.111 plus 1 angle 240 equals minus 0 0.5 minus J 0 0.8666 into 0.555 plus 1 angle 120 this is equal to 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.866 into minus 0 0.444 and this is equal to minus 0 0.1667 minus j 0 0.8666 similarly we can find out vc vc equals 1 into minus 0 0.111 plus 1 angle 120 into 0.555. 1 angle 120 equals 0 0.5 plus J 0. Point, uh, this is minus. This is minus. So 1 angle 120 is minus 0 0.5 plus J 0 0.866 into 0.555 this is 0.555 plus 
1 angle 240 into minus 0 0.444 minus 0 0.5 minus j 0 0.866 into minus 0 0.444 and this is equal to minus 0 0.1667 plus j 0 0.866. So from this we can find out the line voltages because we need to find out the line voltages VAB, VBC and VCA. VAB equals VA minus VB and this is equal to 0 0.1667 plus J 0. 866. In the polar form, this is equal to 0 0.882 angle 79 degrees. This is in per unit quantity. In order to get the actual quantity, we have to multiply the per unit voltage by base phase voltage. This is equal to 0 0.882 angle. 79 into or base phase voltage is 11 by root 3 and this is equal to 5.6 angle 79 kilovolt. This is our VAB. VBC is equal to VB minus VC. This is equal to minus J 0 0.1732. In the polar form, this is equal to 1.732 angle 270. This is in per unit quantity. The actual voltage is 1.732 angle 270 into our base voltage. Base phase voltage should be written here. Because in this problem we have assumed the phase quantity or the phase voltage equals 1 angle 0 per unit. That's why we are multiplying this per unit quantity by base phase voltage. This is equal to 11 angle 270 kilovolt. Now let's find out VCA. It is Vc minus Va and this is equal to minus 0 0.1667 plus J 0 0.866 and this is equal to 0 0.882 angle 100.9 and this is equal to this is in per unit quantity. The actual voltage equals 0 0.882 angle 100.9 into the base phase voltage 11 by root 3. And this is equal to 5.6 angle 100.9 kilovolt. Now we have got the phase currents, phase voltages and the line voltages.